time for Talking Tauntaun! Your Star Wars source at AIPTcomics.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Tauntauns. I am Jim Lahane, and with me as always is Nicole Herview. Hello. And with us is Star Wars Insider and StarWars.com contributor, Galactic Explorer, and co-host of the fantastic Star Wars Ologies podcast, who had the most wonderful um, first episode ever of a show ever, <laughs> who their guest was absolutely um, the, the best guest ever. Was it you, Jim? It was me. Yeah. It's James Floyd. Why, hello there. Hello and welcome. Thank you. How are you doing, James? I am doing fantastic. How, how are how are things on the coast without the blizzard going on? Oh, well, it's fantastic. Uh, I just said fantastic again. Um, it Yeah, no, it's quite windy here. We've had rain off and on, but, you know, it's... In the fifties, high low, middle sixties, so can't oh, complain. That's like jacket weather for you guys. Yeah, no, we're we're totally bundled up. No, actually, the wind has been pretty harsh today. That we had a, a weather service wind advisory. Mm. Yeah, we're in the middle of. I don't know about down by you, Nicole, but mm. the the giant storm that was crossing the country has currently reached us, and so it was somehow twenty nine degrees out. Yet still raining, and oh, I hate so that. yeah, it is like literally the worst weather ever. Where it's like kind of freezing rain, kind of sleet, not really mm. snow at all. It's just it's just terrible. <laughs> I got. One I don't know you. what those words mean. Great. Terrible, rain. Like the freezing rain. I think that's oh the, the one. freezing rain. Yeah. Yeah, and the sleet and the nonsense and the snow. Yeah. Um, we had here in lovely New Jersey, um, a tornado <laughs> yesterday, oh. tornado on the ground. Uh, what? It's did February. You, what did is you see going it? on? No, but it, I, we had an advisory go out not to dox myself, but I'm kind of about to, um, where this tornado is heading. I'm on like the very edge of like the East coast of New Jersey and it was a beeline, like a direct line for not only my town, but on the local news, the, the, the meteorologist was tracking where the tornado was. He mentioned my uh, road. Wow. He was like, this, this street, it's coming for you. And I was like, awesome. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, at that point, so where it hit was it's a lot of farmland in the very dead center of New Jersey. So that's where it hit. I think it was on the ground for a few minutes and then it dissipated. But they're like, it's still really windy. There's still going to be hail. There's still going to be like crazy 50 mile an hour winds. It is still rotating. So you could get another tornado. So like pull everything indoors and get to the center of your home. And I was like, it's February. It's February. This happened about four or five times last summer. Like it's happening more and more every summer because, you know. <laughs> the climate isn't changing or anything, y'all. Um, but yeah, it happened in the middle of February. And by the time it got here, it was just hail. Like, we had nickel size hail yesterday. Um, but, yeah, that was terrifying. It did touch down in Mercer County, just to the west of me. And, um, yeah, it almost it almost hit us. But, thankfully, by the time it passed over, it was fine. Because the closer you get to the coast, the more populated it is. So, like, there was enough stuff to break up the cyclone or whatever the hell i don't know not a meteorologist but it was it was scary one on tv i yeah i think i'd be a good one no i don't freaking know but when i uh, it was wild so that's our weather when i lived in texas i had at the time just purchased a convertible like it was Mm a my like brand brand new brand new used car um but it was like I loved this car and I lived in an apartment complex and I'm in the middle of Texas. And all of a sudden they're talking about this thunderstorm coming through with um, like softball size hail. Oh yeah. Woo! Mm-hmm. And I'm like, 
I don't know. I like I live in an apartment complex. We don't have covered anything. Like, what am I going to do? Like, I was so like petrified about my car. Well, the storm missed us. Never even got in rain. Great. I left town literally like a mile outside of the city. There were cars that looked like a giant had taken their cars with a sledgehammer. Oh, wow. Like That's awful. windshields were smashed up. The entire car like had pop marks in the car. Like yeah. it just missed us by probably less than like a couple miles. Yeah. Wow. That's wild. You got lucky, my friend. Yes. As did I that, yesterday, but even so, yeah, it's just, that's real lucky. How, how did they even offer car insurance there? Because, you know, it's like, it's going to happen. Yeah, stuff's going to go wrong. I don't know. It's like a, a offering homeowner's insurance when you live on a fault line, like an active yeah. fault line. Like, Yeah. Yeah, man. Can't even expensive. afford this. I don't know why you're asking. It's like living in a floodplain. Yeah. Let's get flood insurance. Yeah, you can't afford that. <laughs> no, I, flood insurance, I think, by me is really... Because we we're, like, right by where Sandy was, like, really bad. Hurricane Sandy. Um, and I think it's, like, crazy freaking expensive. And you need to get separate insurance for flood damage. Like, it's it's wild. It's wild here. But, yeah, that was that was the craziest thing ever to be like oh tornado warning i was like it wait a minute that's getting more and more frequent and then for it to happen i'm never gonna get over the fact that it just happened in february and that we had a thunderstorm in february that doesn't happen here like that's not a thing no you should have no that that, it's not a thing no but it but it will be (laughs) yeah yeah more and more so but yeah that was a weird one but anyway anyway star wars star wars (laughs) We're going to be living on other planets soon, right? So that's relevant. Your tauntaun will freeze before you reach the first marker. Then I'll see you in hell. Hello, what have we here? So I got one piece of news. I know James is excited. <laughs> I don't know about Nicole. I um, don't. Actually, I do know about Nicole. <laughs> I am apathetic at best. <laughs> I don't know. She was, she was very excited to talk about the Nicole-sized pieces of hail. Ha! That's funny. <laughs> That's good. So we got a release date for the Young Jedi Adventures. Uh, I guess when the premiere episode is, I'm assuming that they're going to be doing weekly of this. Um, it will start on May 4th, the same dun, day dun, that dun. we're going to get uh, a Vision Season 2, which I assume we're getting that all on one day. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. Is the Young Jedi Adventures coming to Disney Plus, or are they putting it on the Star Wars Kids YouTube. Uh on their release it says premiering on Disney Plus and Disney Junior. Oh cool. So I I I hate it when they premiere shows on YouTube. Um so I'm glad that it's <laughs> coming to Disney Plus. <laughs> I don't mind. It can be on YouTube. Just also put it on Disney Plus cuz I'm mm. not going to YouTube. <laughs> so that's all the news I got. I got nothing, man. So I think we could talk some Bad Batch. Sure. Bad Batch, Bad Batch, Bad Batch. Yay! So why haven't I heard of this squad? Experimental Unit Clone Force 99. The defective clones with the uh, desirable mutations. They call themselves the Bad Batch. We're going to cover four episodes. Uh, episode season two, episode six, tribe, episode seven, the clone conspiracy, eight, truth and consequences, and nine, the crossing. We're not going to be mentioning New Mexico at all. Not at all. That's truth or. Oh, it's truth or consequences. You don't get both. No. Nicole has no idea what we're talking about. There's a town (laughs) called truth or consequences in New Mexico. Oh. Oh yeah, I do. I have heard of that. I just didn't for some reason. I thought you were referencing a film of some kind. I had no idea, but yeah, no, I've 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 heard of that. Yeah, the town that changed its name to a game show name. Very fun, very entertaining. But now we all know about it, right? Took me a minute, but yeah. <laughs> and, and Nicole's caught back up. <laughs> yeah. Oops. All right. So, episode six, tribe where we get reintroduced 
to our favorite Wookiee Jedi. Ah. What do you mean, ah? What? Buryaga. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah, I forgot about Burry. Okay, Buryaga. our uh, first original, our first favorite. The, the original one, the OG. Yeah, the uh, OG Wookiee Jedi, Bungie. Bungie? Cute. Bungie? Yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm pretty sure that's incorrect. Gunji? Gunji. There we go. Yeah. You got me all mixed up. Now I have Buryaga and Gunji in my head. That was genuine. <laughs> I thought you were making a joke. Oh, Jim. See, that's the problem is you make so many dad jokes that I don't know when you're kidding anymore. So that was a great way to cover your butt if you were like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going senile. I would have believed this you. Is just, I would have uh, believed wow. you. Wow. This is yeah, my brain I, I'm just with stopping. Nicole. I really thought you were making thought, a joke there. Yep, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, me too. There you go. There you go. Sell it better. <laughs> but yes. Next time, sell it a little better. But yeah, uh, yeah. Our, uh-huh. our, our boy Gunji. Had we ever seen him post Order sixty six or heard anything about him? I love finding out people are alive. You know what I mean? I think the only. I think we haven't seen him outside of that young Jedi arc. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, back in Clone Wars. That yeah. Uh, yeah, he when he appears here in Bad Batch, it like I knew immediately, like like I heard the Wookiee and then you know, he had the little snaggle tooth. I'm like, that's Gunji. And then the lightsaber came out and I'm like, Wow, I'm going to tear up a little bit and I kinda mm-hmm. did. No, yeah. I did. And then later on it dawned on me is like, if he's alive, maybe the other ones are alive too please yeah there's there's so many opportunities you know for people to be alive after order 66 i feel like there's if we didn't see them go down because we've seen order 66 how many times at my least, god like uh, at least three in at least in visual media correct so if we haven't seen them die Oh wait, we're the not table. even counting. Yeah, we're not even counting like Kenobi because we've seen it in yep. Bad Batch, The Clone Wars, mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith. Mm-hmm. Kenobi had it. The Mandalorian has had some like flashbacks I to it. Th- did uh, Rebels have a flashback to it? I don't remember if Rebels had a flashback to it because of I Kanan. don't. Well, because that I would be remember. weird that because they did it on Bad Batch. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, p- maybe not. Maybe they didn't do it that way. Um. It's been a lot, right? But the point is, if we've seen it from so many different angles and so many different ways and we still haven't seen someone die, they're on the table still. As far as I am concerned, I go by, like, the rule of no body, no death. So I'm I'm excited to see who else we... Uh... Mace Window, we're looking at you! <laughs> no body, no death. Mace can come back. Yep. Gotta hand it to him. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It, it, there's a lot. There's a lot of people that could still be alive. I Nicole understood. missed your joke. No, I, I heard it. <laughs> I, I, it. I, I moved past. It. <laughs> don't worry. Oh, I brought it fun. back. I, it was, it was great. It. it was good. <laughs> that, well, this is not a visual medium, Jim. But. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, so Gunji was in apparently two other Clone Wars episodes. I just looked That's it up. I thought. Uh, he was in he The was Wrong around. Jedi, which is one of the, the Ahsoka's last episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, Destiny in a Vision to Yoda, huh. according oh, to Wikipedia. Okay. Interesting. Wikipedia I wonder if Ahsoka. Gunji, I don't know, in, in, now we're just, we're getting off topic here. That's all good. There is no topic. Topic is Gunji. Oh, the topic okay. Is Gunji, yeah. I'm just wondering for for the wrong Jedi if he just appeared in one of the the newsreel flashbacks at the beginning, or if he actually appears in the episode. But mm. I don't remember. I'm gonna be fully honest with you. I I barely remember that the wrong Jedi is part of the Ahsoka arc. That's about all. I I am uh, I, I I put it in that filing cabinet in the back of the brain, mm. the one that you don't go back into. Right. It's just storage. Yeah. So we yeah. go ahead. Oh, we're 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 reintroduced to Gunji as he is being kidnapped by um I some droid like who are they? Do we know these these droids? Bro, I have no idea. We 
don't, but when I first saw them, I thought, what if they're introducing the droid Gotra, which is That's a what crime I syndicate? Wondered. I wondered if it was them. Mm. I don't know uh, about that one. But I don't know. I was reading a review and they mentioned the name of the group and it was not the Gotra. I mean, they, they might be part of it. The name is mentioned in the episode real quick and kind of dropped. Hmm. But then the entire criminal organization goes away. This episode was really weird because it was all over the place. Sure We was. start off the episode on a space station freeing a Wookiee Jedi, and we end the episode putting out a flames on Kashyyyk. Flames on the side of my face. <laughs> um, yeah, that was all over the place. And then watching... I love it when people, like... I don't love it. I, I it, it does something. Um, it was creepy as, sh as hell. Woo! Caught it! Um, <laughs> hang on. Let me breathe. It was creepy as hell watching that, like, one, like, leader droid. Was it a droid or was it a... Whatever. Someone died. Someone got eaten by stuff. I uh, was the half spiders? paying attention to this. The, yeah. Oh, I was half paying it was attention the... to this episode. Which the one was it? That's the what I thought. Yeah, yeah. He got, I was like, going to um, say that, but I was like, ooh, that's random. Is that real? Because this episode was so random that I was like, there's no way there was a Trandoshan in there. There, <laughs> there was. <laughs> yeah, um, there's a whole, there's a whole, they were working with the thing. Empire. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Um, <laughs> is, yes. Is this where we break out into song? <laughs> I'm very close. Yes. Um, that was creepy. No, no. It, yeah, love a it, weird ending of death and strangeness and just like creatures like eating a person very weird um i definitely understand your i kind of was paying attention i watched this episode twice the mm -hmm. first time i watched it i couldn't keep paying it like for some reason i like had trouble paying attention to the episode because it was all over the place i watched it again i'm like no i'm gonna pay attention what just happened like what <laughs> i'm like <laughs> like like yeah. five minutes has gone by. I don't know what happened. <laughs> like I almost rewatched it last night, and then I was like, I don't want to. <laughs> I just I was just like I don't want to, so I didn't. No, so but the next two episodes are at. so great, excellent. That it's okay. That's what's upsetting. Is those that two parter? That two parter was unbelievable. Like so good, and then this last one was fine. But we'll get there. One thing that struck me from from Tribe that. Again, I kept getting these little bits like, oh, the droid Gotra. Oh, it's Gunji. Uh, when they start to go to Kashyyyk, I'm like, oh, we're going to see it kind of the way we saw it in Jedi Fallen Order, um, which I guess takes place later. Mm -hmm. But um, still that that sense that we're, we're moving towards that and they're going to start uh, strip mining the trees. Um, but yeah, no, it was interesting. It was interesting to see the Trandoshans and the Empire working together and the empire basically taking orders from this uh random trandoshan mm -hmm. i liked the visuals like it was like oh, this whole beautiful. this whole show has been gorgeous and it was like so ralph mccrory it's like mm. they went to his original um kashik drawings that he did and were like we're gonna put this in the show yeah, because that's exactly yeah. what it looked like. It looked like his drawings, and like there's a, like a little animation on the drawing, and I'm like, okay, so it's not a hundred percent like the drawing, but it like looks just <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did really enjoy them bringing Gunji back, like, or not even really back. I mean, yes, it's back to because she he doesn't know where he's from, because of course, um, but him going home as it were like that was an emotional moment and like really beautiful and like he has a home now and it's like awesome and somehow with all of that somehow Gunji like, returned somehow <laughs> Gunji returned i don't know like it was just like it felt really disjointed and disconnected and how we got from part a to part b i don't fully remember and it's just it's, like it, it was makes, fine that's it i'm like i i'm like it all makes sense but mm -hmm. it's it just like felt so jumpy it did it was as a person with adhd that was a rough one that was a rough one. i was like where are we 
What we did, like, there was no thread for me to, like, hold on to for too long because it was, like, a different, it was just very all over the place. That being said, I enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed watching it as just, like, a passive, like, okay, cool. But then when you think critically about it, it's like, yeah, I don't I, know, I, man. As someone with a diagnosed old. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. I, I also had a problem paying attention. I understand. I also had to go to the bathroom like three times during it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks right. for sharing. Yeah, good good color there. Thank you. The, it, comes the, with, it comes with the old. <laughs> oh man. The the I think one of the, the things that I pulled out of it that uh was you know recognizing that Gunji has no idea how to be a Wookiee. Like he he is a Wookiee, but he has no idea of the beliefs that you know this goes back to the the Jedi basically kidnapping children, and then mm-hmm. you know Omega is right there with him, and because she has no idea of how to be a child, that that you know they're both thrown into this war, and you know they're they're trying to find family where they can, and I thought it was kind of odd that that like did Gunji really get a say, and it's like hey we brought you home here's your home, you know good luck to you. And it's like, you know, the, the Wookiees promise to take care of him, but it's like, what if Gunji wanted to do something else? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know what else he wanted. Um, it's a, it's just, it's a good question. I mean, you would hope that somewhere along that, that journey, they would have been like, all right, so we're going to Kashyyyk. You good? Like, that's what you want? Awesome. Like, that's all you needed to do. Um... But yeah, it's, it is interesting how many options he had. I don't know. Um, Put your laser sword away, kid. Yeah. <laughs> or like maybe let's go find his village yeah. rather than these are the first Wookiees we came across. Well, I wondered because they came across the village and they said that this village is all burned down. I mm. wondered if that was his village. Mm. And we been. just like it wasn't explicitly stated. Because it seemed like weird that they came to a village and said, this village is all run- burned down and he's kind of sad. Like, you're on mm-hmm. an entire planet of Wookiees and you can go anywhere because you do not know where you belong. Yeah. But maybe that was his village. I don't know. There's a lot of question marks for me on this one. I really don't know. There's a lot that wasn't clear. Um, my, my, my favorite part. Okay, so you have Hunter, who kind of speaks Wookiee. And you have Tech, who seems to speak Wookiee pretty well. Yeah. Well, you have the um the the elder Wookiee speaking at the end, and then Tech translates for Hunter. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Hunter also knew pretty good what, what is, <laughs> like Gunji was, was saying. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's like you do, you you don't need to mansplain the Wookiee to me, Tech. Well, it's for us, but yes, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Could have been to anybody else. Could have been New Omega. Like Omega wasn't there. She was like, that's what I'm saying. You yeah. could have put Omega there. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's true. I don't know. Whoa, I, I just got a connection now thinking about, you know, Omega not being there and them having to to release Gunji back to the family that that this is about family. And then what do we get at the end of the next arc? The family dynamic changing because somebody leaves. Yeah, that's what I found. I, I did notice um, that because like I watched the I watched the crossing um, last night and then I jumped back to this episode to rewatch it and kind of um, work through them again before we talked and I noticed a couple things I noticed a family dynamic how because I feel like when we when we talk about the next dark echoes leaving was very sudden yeah uh, to to us as an audience but like you could see like they built her reaction to it in this episode and also when we get the start of this episode, she's just sitting on the stairs of the ship. She's sitting on the stairs of the ship almost every episode, I realized, in this season. She's, like, because she at the crossing, she's just sitting on the stairs of the, in, in the front of the ship. Like, the season premiere, she's just sitting on the stairs in front of the ship, like, fishing. Mm-hmm. It's like, why do we keep getting the same imagery of her just looking, I don't know if, like, lost or bored or, like, what is it that Forlorn. she's just kind of... Yeah, like, she's always uh, looking forlorn. That girl, you know. It that's that's her middle name. Ome forlorn ga ga yeah ga. <laughs> mm-hmm. Forlorn yeah. ga for oh forlorn ga. 
I don't like that. Um, yeah, or just I don't know, man. It's that was not my favorite. That's so, all. The next episode, the clone that was conspiracy. My <laughs> well, those two I, are really good. I found the next episode hilarious because a lot of people are like the clone conspiracy was great. It did not have the Bad Batch in it whatsoever. Not no, one member didn't. of the Bad Batch was in this episode at all. Even in the first season, the episode that they were barely in, they were still in. This is the first episode they have not been in at all. It was reminding me of Boba Fett. <laughs> I was like, wait, where is the Boba Fett? Where is the Bad Batch? It made sense that they had to tell the story a certain way. It is relevant to them as, you know, they're clones. Um yeah, I don't know. It, it, I still think it's it was one of the most compelling and interesting um, two parters. Like they don't stand by themselves. These episodes cannot stand alone. They had to be put out together for a reason. Um, but I thought it was a great double episode. And if you do consider it a double episode, they were in it. Yeah, but so like, that's what it, you, you. If we're being technical about it, you're right. But they were released they, on the same day. They were released as an hour long special essentially yeah. and you're right they the bad batch mm-hmm. are entirely in the second half so very it's not like... very <laughs> centered you know and very prominent and very important and i will tell you that ending we love we love a random ian mcdermott we we <laughs> love that love when that happens he's always delightful um it was like how did i not see it coming i don't know if you guys saw it coming but I don't know how I didn't see it coming that, like, no matter what, Palpatine was going to get what he wanted. And yeah. he had thought of every everything that could go wrong. He clearly had no faith in uh, Admiral Admiral Rampart. Um, Admiral? Yeah. What was his title? Rampart. That guy. Yeah. Um, clearly had no faith in him. It was very obvious that he was like, all right, we're going to build contingencies on contingencies. And it was brilliant. It was like, oh my god, it's the same plan all over again. Like the two sides fighting against each other, completely orchestrated by him. Like it's, it was deja vu, and it was brilliant. And I don't know why I didn't see that. I thought they had won, and then all of a sudden he got exactly what he wanted. Anyway, he's like, oh yeah, this just proves it. Like good soldiers follow orders. Like came back to bite them all in the butt, and it's uh. It's very Palpatine. That was that was very Palpatine. I loved it. I loved every second of it. Hated it for them, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I I found like the first the introduction of Palpatine in that episode was the best use of Palpatine that they could have done because they also like um teased it at the the beginning of the arc cuz they're like um how Palpatine never shows up. Mm-hmm. And it, like it, like he he doesn't have time to deal with this, and all of a sudden like you kind of get the musical cue, and it's like he just rises up through the floor, and I'm like, damn, that is like that is great the way they it's did that. Epic. Um, mm-hmm. and like you're right, Ian McDermott like spot on voice work for this. It was like oh, it, it was so beautiful, and the way I, I find this hilarious in that. They he said that you get rid of the clones because they follow orders too well, but in actuality, it's the opposite. The clones are like fleeing the army because they don't want to do what they're being tasked to. It's not that they are following orders so well; is that they can't they they can't trust the clones, and so they want people who are basically they can mind wipe into their organization right. through indoctrination and right. so like the get the people who will willingly join up into the empire are going to be much easier to control will follow your orders better than the people that you had supposedly bred to be in that position and literally put a thing in their brain to make them comply when they heard certain you know what i mean it's um yeah it's interesting how he flipped that script he flipped that script so easily into and it it just shows you spin right and how you can kind of spin spin things just like to craft to your own message and your message can change right um yeah really interesting yeah i i didn't necessarily see that 
he he built up this tension to to you know either way he wins i'd think it just like oh this happens but in the bigger picture i can just smooth this all over i can just twist this to my advantage no matter what and so it's like ne not necessarily his plan but he's flexible he's he's you know a good leader in the sense that you know i can take the situation and turn it into my advantage no matter what and you know mm -hmm. I, I always confuse though, like why is Rampart in the Senate? Is like there's got to be a lot of admirals, and like you don't have admirals going to advocate for bills like in our government that you know you have them testify maybe, but it's like here he is flying his own Senate pot around, and yeah. aren't there like grand admirals or moths or something? But I guess it's because it's his bill, but I don't know. I don't understand the inner workings of that, like. It's really a dummy Senate, isn't it? Like, right now it's a Senate just, like, to say you have one. Um, but really, Palpatine's going to do whatever the heck he wants. He's well, not th there yet, but that's, that's like, what, what he's I, setting up, right? I think, yeah, we're we're still... we He doesn't have enough power at this point yeah. to get rid of the Senate. And so right, it's he's there, working on it. He's working on it. You can tell it. he's working on it. Um because, like, the Senate will continue to fail and screw up, and then he'll be like, look, the Senate doesn't work, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I am the Senate. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's... The whole thing is is wild, but, yeah, I got... It was the first time I got chills with an Emperor entrance in a while. Um, it was really effective, and really, really good and well done, and I loved that Senator. What's her name? <laughs> Senator Chuchi. Chuchi, Chuchi, she's back too. I love her. I think she's great. Um, oh, Rampart is a vice admiral. He's not even a full oh. admiral. Oh, well, pff, the heck is that? Vice admiral. I don't know. I'm, Does I'm, that mean he works like in Vegas or something? No, Miami. <laughs> there you go. Ask your parents, Nicole. I know, I know that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was born in 1992, not 2003. I know what that is. That's still too and, late. And, and, I know. And she, she's Thanks. still doxing herself. I know. I really am. That's fine. I, I did like the random cameo of uh, Senator Pamlo from, we see her in Rogue One, and they're just like, oh, hey, she's here. She's a regular senator, not a... Uh, Ex senator. That's yeah. a, I I heard that said. I do not know who that is. Uh the the African American looking senator. Uh you see her in Rogue One. Uh she's one of the ones that says, No, we can't fight this. We need to to give up. I can and see her in my so, mind's eye. And then yeah. Jenner so is like, No, what choice do we have? Oh okay. yeah. what chance she's, do we yeah. have? Yeah. Man, these people are senators for a long time. They really like, yeah, Bill Organa is like a been senator. Through the whole world. Like Bill Organa is a senator up until Rogue Forever. One. Like he and like be before the Clone Wars started. That's like yeah. thirty freaking years. He's good at his job. They're like Orrin Hatch. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like like Harry Reid or something. That uh... yeah. oh man, yeah, they're wild. <laughs> yeah, so we get Chuchi back. She's also from the Clone Wars. Yeah, big fan. Big fan. I did have other yeah, what, things to say. I was like, <laughs> you know, she's only, you know, the Clone Wars is only, you know, a couple of years. The start of it is, yeah, so is this, she's only been in the Senate possibly only like four years from where we first see her to uh, now. Yeah, and she's going up against random Vice Admiral dude. Who want to kill her? Yeah, it's like, oh, cool. She's just constantly getting shot at with her very tall guards. Yeah. Um, I really liked. I'm. I don't know names, guys. What's his putts? Um, the clone. <laughs> Rex. Rex. Split. <laughs> the other guy. I'm like, which one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's yeah, a, not there's obviously a few. not Rex. Come on now. Um. The one who unfortunately passes away. Um, he's got an S name. That's why I called him Spliff. Yeah. Um, Slick? Is that but his name? Is it Slick? I, th I, I think so. so. I randomly was when, when this episode came out, I was I'm also watching Clone Wars with my daughter and we had 
trespass on that night. And it was the one that introduces Senator Chuchi. And it was like, holy cow, she appeared in the next episode on Bad Batch. Um, anyway, that was cool. But I th- the next episode of, of Clone Wars we watched is uh, The Hidden Enemy or something where, where there's a, a clone on the inside that is selling them out to the Separatists. And I th- want to say his name is Slick. It's but Slip. Maybe... Slip. His name is Slip. All right. Yeah. He uh, He gave us that. <gasps> Sorry, I'm looking at voice actors, and I'm I'm seeing people that I know from other stuff, and I just got really, really excited. Oh, so I I was thinking that that you, my my joke just you know it was totally excellent. Blew your mind. It was so good. <laughs> no, I I'm just seeing. I watch uh, Critical Role, which is a D and D like mm-hmm. series, and two of them were in are in and do a lot of voices. Two of the people from Critical Role are in this show. They're like fourth build. Like if you look on the Bad Batch cast list, it's like D. Bradley Baker, Michelle Ang, Noshir Dalal. I'm not going to say his name right. I'm so sorry. Um, Rhea Perlman and then two guys from Critical Role. Like bam, bam. Like, jeez. Who are the guys from Critical Role? Liam O'Brien and Sam Regal. Who oh. are, they're, they're also just really uh prolific voice actors <laughs> like that's that's what it is um but liam was someone named bolo bolo a captured uh fall in a pike a scrapper tactical mm. droid ranny oh, so it's Rainey. not just not just this episode no he's been in six episodes and so has sam regal been in six episodes as catch factory worker number two Masked guard number one, <laughs> vendor. Uh, yeah, like it's just like a bunch of random like bit parts, really. Um, random but, dude number three. <laughs> I was just shocked to see their names on something in Star Wars. I don't know. That got me. Sorry. I'm currently trying to listen to slash watch um, 120 episodes of Critical Role in the next two months so that I can watch, I can finish the campaign while on a flight to England because it's exactly as long as a flight to England because all these episodes are anywhere between three and five hours. So I'm trying to binge it so I can do that. So that's a lot of my mental space right now is D&D. Okay. And Critical Role. Sorry. So seeing their names, that was like, oh my God. My friends are not my friends. I don't know them as people, obviously. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, that's Liam and Sam. Sorry for the detour, y'all. Holy crap. Critical so did, Role's great, though. Big, did, big recommend. Sorry, go on. Did it, either it of you guys. Your mind. <laughs> hey. <laughs> did either of you guys think that the assassin had to be. Um, Crosshair? Crosshair, yeah. No, I actually said out loud, we're supposed to think that's crosshair and it's not crosshair. Like, I was surprised they didn't use crosshair. Um, I I think it was a really good, like, red herring. Um, I think it's more interesting that it's not. Yeah, one that is, you know, a true believer that, that you know, is willing to bite that suicide tooth to, to yeah. protect his whateverness. <laughs> yeah is whatever um yeah i i knew they were trying to tease that it was probably crosshair and then i was like it's not crosshair um also where are yeah. their registration numbers it's a great question um the, they they managed to wipe this guy's registration number i didn't think they could do that where are their registration it? numbers it's on their feet like andy Andy's toys and Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, there's a bunch of answers to that question that are very inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> my question is they like test. My guess is they scanned him, like tested his blood or something and nothing came up. And that's how they like. I, I was going to say you test number. his blood. They all have the same oh. blood. But I mean, you could put a genetic custom genetic marker in to to be a serial code, essentially. Y'all would know that better than because well, it wouldn't be tattoos because obviously you could change a tattoo. Um, You could like cover it up. Yeah, like I don't see. I I can't imagine unless it's something genetic. Yeah, it could be that that 
he has the markers there for the the serial code, but what they're yeah. connected to has been erased. Right. So it's like these numbers don't exist. He's right. he's part That's of something that there. you know is you know black ops type thing. Yeah. Well, if it's not in the the computer, it doesn't exist. Well, clearly. <laughs> That's how that works. Also, Jim, I really like that you were like, oh, well, obviously you could change your tattoos. See, the thing about tattoos is they're pretty permanent. <laughs> <laughs> I got what you meant. Like, oh, yeah, cover it up. Like, that's easy. Yeah, just, but, just like, get a black Sharpie. <laughs> that's the thing about <laughs> tattoos, Jim, is they're really hard to undo. <laughs> like, I've seen uh, lasers take that stuff off. Yes, in like 20 sessions for a billion dollars and a... a insane amount of pain once yes. one session crank the power on that laser and you will not be you having die. a problem i think you <laughs> pass away well, immediately you, you know you could probably just get that limb lopped off and then just get a replacement put on i hear there's a lot of people that can are a donor match to you you know yeah well that you, is a good point you know the death <laughs> maybe star, some of the people you shot you just take one yeah. of their arms well the death star was originally a tattoo removal tool you know what? That would be really effective. <laughs> it would remove you from the tattoo. That's for sure. <laughs> Tattoos oh, are dark. That is dark. I mean, th th I'm surprised that th there's a Tatooine joke. There's a Tatooine joke. Oh, there's somewhere. Uh, and I can't find it quick enough. So I'm just going to yeah, say but that. No, you, you found it. You beat us to it. So it's there's well I played. Know, I, I was going to say I'm surprised they didn't target Tatooine for that very reason. But I don't know if that tracks. I'm a writer workshop, for a living. Workshop I, I don't know, dude. I don't S know. Send they it back pay to me the to table. write words, not be funny. Go ahead. <laughs> well, they don't awkward. pay me for either. No, they, <laughs> I do this pro it's bono. It's nice. Wow. I do this pro bono. <laughs> All right. Do we have any other comments on those two? They're great. I very much enjoyed them. To surprise me with a palp between palp. Palpatine twist. Palatine? Palpa twist. Palpa no, pa twist. That young, young Palpatine, when before Palpa he was 13, he was Palpa a Palpatween. <laughs> he was a Palpatween. Palpa twist. Let's say I was going to say that. It was a Palpa twist. Um, <laughs> that sounds dirty in and of itself. <laughs> you're dead right it does. That is, that's in the. See, um, you got to pay yeah. extra for that. <laughs> you do. You do have to pay extra. Um, that's surprising to be able to do that. That's pretty good. So I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a bummer. It was a heck of a bummer. And then losing Echo was... That's I, well, I forgot I wanted to bring that tough. up. That was tough. That was tough. And random. I wasn't shocked. I wasn't shocked because I think we had talked about in the first episode we did on this, that difference of opinion between what Hunter wants to do and what Echo wants to do. I, I had called out that that was going to be... A key point of conflict. I didn't think it would be like this. Gonna be honest with you. Obviously, didn't see this one coming the way it did. But I wasn't shocked because I knew that th that was going to have to play a factor. Um, I didn't know. I kind of expected it to be more of a conflict, like between the two of them and an argument, versus like Echo just being like, "Yo, I'm going my own way." Peace. You know. And Hunter not screaming, what about us? What about everything we've been through? That's a High School Musical 3 reference. It's fine. Because um, he's got he's got to go his own way. It's a song. Anyway. Um, but he's not going his own way. He's going back with Rex. So it was just like, right. I, I went, but, I, I switched families. You know what? Not quite digging this family anymore. Yeah. Going to go yeah. back to my old family. I just mean his own way versus yeah, like I know. the Bad Batch. But yes. Um, it was surprising, like in the moment, but then I was like, this makes sense. I'd prefer this than like a blow up between them. And I kind of like what it is doing character wise to the rest of the team and how like, this is, this is my segue into the next episode. This is a very character driven episode. This was all Omega and tech and like everyone else was window dressings and that's fine. And I like to see the other the other dads dadding, um, not just Hunter, because Hunter's like a very traditional, you know, he's going to dad. Um, I like seeing tech 
kind of step into that role. And I really enjoyed his whole speech about like, just because I don't react to things the same way you do or feel exactly the same way you do, that doesn't mean I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Um, That doesn't mean I don't care. That doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, upset or whatever. I, I can't, he said it great. I'm not going to repeat it. Um, Yeah, it was cool. I feel like like anybody who watches the show can see that if he was in our galaxy, he'd be placed on the spectrum. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. this was kind of his explanation for that. He's like, yes, I can feel what you feel, but I'm not going to show it the same way. Right, exactly. And I, you're right. I really, I actually really liked this episode because it yeah. did kind of break down like their relationship and how it's not that he doesn't want to be one of her dads. It's that he doesn't know how to talk to her. Not in the same way the others do, right? Like he can absolutely be a phenomenal father figure to her just in a different way. Yeah. And that's fine. Um, and he proves it. He proves it so well in this episode by simply jumping into that crevice after her. Just being like, that's mm-hmm. just a dark who knows what. I'm going. Yeah. He doesn't hesitate. That's phenomenal. Like, that tells me everything I need to know before the lovely, wonderful speech about how much tech actually cares. He's just displaying it differently. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah. And kind of taking a step back with Echo, I like watching the episode a second time. I tried to see if they seeded in his leaving and mm. it's still it, it's barely there. It is like a little bit, but it's like it's still at the end of it. You're like, wait, what? And like, like yeah. Omega is like, everyone's like, peace out. And Omega's like, wait, what? Like, like kind of us, like the audience, yeah. like nobody exactly. told us anything. <laughs> I think that's why they did it that way. So we empathize with Omega. Mm-hmm. That, that we're Whereas, still processing. Yeah. Th- that his contract got cut. Yes. Yeah. D-, D Bradley Baker no longer doing Echo because Echo's contract got cut. <laughs> Yeah, and, can't and afford that's to pay just him. the one extra character he can't do. It's like, bro, you brought back all the other clones. Like, I got, I got to do Slip. Oh wait, no, I don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, well, that was just for the one episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, he I got think the pink was... slip. <sighs> yep, yep. <laughs> the thought that was in my head stopped. It's gone now. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay. I... It's okay. I, I that, probably had the same did that. same thought. I was like, um, family friendly. Fascinating. Um, <laughs> God help me. Um, yeah, I didn't think about it until just now that like they did that to us so that we felt the same way Omega did. We did, we were just as surprised as she was, um, which is a choice. It, it's it's fine. Um, it also but yeah it, it kind of makes the next episode just the aftermath of that and not much else you also in the next episode the, the last one we're talking about the crossing you realize mm-hmm. how small their group is now because we got rid of um crosshair but mm-hmm. we took in echo and so the group still felt like pretty like big size and then we get omega into the group and like with crosshair gone it's like still a pretty good size like now it's just four of them and you're like wow this is like significantly like it feels so much smaller now even with just the loss of one of them yeah that that their their overall effectiveness you know they recognize is like oh we can't have one person guarding this if somebody else has to do this because we're now missing echo um, they they also need to put a low jack on their ship or at least lock it. Yes. It's like Star Labs. Anybody can walk in. Or just about? not have Wrecker doing? watch it. Like <laughs> I mean, my God. <laughs> what Where's Gonky? Wait, is Gonky gonna hijack the ship ship back and and bring it back? Because that would be awesome. I'd love that. I'd like that very much. That'd be really cool. Um they're going to get that shit back. Come on now. Like, it's got to happen. I just don't know how. But the other thing that was interesting about this episode. Razor besides, Crest. Mm, um, 
besides being a brilliant like character piece um for tech and omega it also showed us one more way that sid is not reliable at all um sid was seriously like figure it out and make it work for a few days like and they're like we don't have food it wasn't it wasn't even a few days it was where i can't come get you at all and they talked her into a few days a few days (laughs) and they're like bro we're gonna die out here you sent us out here come get us what is wrong with you and she like isn't even upset about it she's like figure it out also we have a bag of money we got a bag of money (laughs) and also we just saved your butt like four times and here's the receipts and she's still like all right it's gonna take me a few days and it's like oh they're really how the way they didn't really plant a ton of seeds about echo they are planting seeds left right and center about how we cannot trust sid and i am very interested to see where that goes because i have i got i have feelings about where that might be going also, we're led to believe she's like flat broke. Where'd she get the money for a mine? Where did she get the money for a mine? I have uh, gambling questions. Or, it's just, or she know, got ripped like, off because the, we already said that the mine was likely yeah. um, empty. All the stuff they found was in the other mine, <laughs> which <laughs> they stole. Really from. lucky that they just you know ran right into that. Um, very interesting. I. I just still can't get over this whole like, oh yeah, just jump down that weird crevasse. Yeah. Um, you're going underwater. Don't panic though. It's gonna be fine. Like stuff like that. Caves in particular. That's a big no from me. I get very upset very quickly. And even though these are cartoons, I got very upset very quickly. I was like. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do if you go? You can't get back up, and there's no way out. What do y'all? And I know it's gonna be fine because they wrote it, but like, well, I'm just, like, ah, freak. I out. just assumed text fall would be broken by the bloody splotch on the ground from <laughs> where uh, Echo land or uh, Omega landed. Like, he just jumped do down into a black hole. Like, <laughs> I th- I guess it's because he didn't hear a splat. I don't think she had enough time from the time he like you're right he was he really a, he, just flew in there yeah it was it was milliseconds after she fell he was immediately behind her yeah which is just no logic just heart you know which is not tech which I think is very interesting um yeah it was wild it it just shows you how much he genuinely does love her. And um, I think this was a breakthrough for them. And I think, I don't know, I've said it already, so I'm not going to, I'm sorry, I'm not going to repeat it, I promise. But so, yeah, I just think his speech probably hit a lot of people. Well, I got, I got two, great. I got two more things I want to say about this episode. Yeah. One is, so Wrecker is Mufasa? Is that what I'm, yeah, I'm trying that, to get? Like. That, <laughs> The whole Lion King stampede sequence is like right there. <laughs> it was, it was, I'm like, I'm, is Omega Simba? Like, I, 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 I don't know if I'm, uh, cause it was, it was like almost beat for beat. <laughs> like I it, literally said out loud, stampede in the gorge Simba's down there. I said it. Like, <laughs> it, it was the same gorge, like, it, wild. That's um like I don't think anybody did not notice that like it was yeah oh my word I'm like this is this is so obvious and and Jim was looking at those ravine walls and he just thought it was gorgeous gorgeous yes actually uh, like when the when they came out at the end and I'm like that looks like Monument Valley right down there um they they definitely modeled it after that. Mm. But my second thing, we're going to go on a science field trip. There we go. Okay. So when uh, Omega first gets into the, uh, when they they first call her in to help out, uh, I think Hunter or Tech, um, one of them's like, you need to drill this. um, I don't even remember what the the Star Wars-y thing is, which happens to be a liquid inside a crystal. Um, Like those gummy candies. Yes, exactly. Just like the the gushers. And he's like, just drill around the fossilized quartz. 
<laughs> First thing that pops into my mind, that's not a thing. <laughs> and then I thought about it because that's what I do. And I'm like, how can I make this work? And I'm thinking, and I'm like, well, fossilization is what happens when all the minerals get replaced in a, like a, a bone or a tree. Um, everything gets replaced. And so can that happen to quartz? Can like the actual minerals be replaced inside a quartz crystal? And that's called a pseudomorph, um, where you have a mineral crystal that's in the shape of another crystal because it replaced that other crystal. And so basically what they were talking about was a pseudomorph of quartz. And I, I so went down that I'm like, this is, this is, this is hitting all my geek buttons. So is it possible? Is it doable? Like, could you it's, do that? Yes. I think that's, they basically just, cause quote fossilized quartz is not a thing. Um, it's sure. a, like that term has never been used, but there are pseudomorphs of quartz, which is in essence, the same thing. Right. Can, can you store weird explosive goo in them? Maybe. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know what the weird explosive goo is, and like why? Why it's in a crystal? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a good question. Because they made it sound like they were mining a mineral, but the mineral was a liquid, and the definition of a mineral is not a liquid. Yes. This goes back to like, like coax. It's in those tanks at the end in Solo. It's like they're in a liquid, unless that's like a liquid suspension. Hmm. I don't understand any of this stuff. That's for y'all. I don't know. <laughs> I just smile and wave and go, that's interesting. That sounds right. I It is interesting and it does sound right. I can't say anything else. <laughs> that's it. Like, holy crap. It is I, fascinating, though. I'm, I'm curious as to where that water drains out of. And after that waterfall, it goes into this pool. But obviously, it's got to drain out somewhere. Yes, because otherwise that that would be full of water, and they all would have drowned and died. Well, theoretically, so it's clearly it just going somewhere. Keeps like it's it was in an underground cavern. I would assume it would keep going, probably. Yeah. Right, but in that final like pool, it's got to be going somewhere, you know. Yeah, very tiny cracks. Sure. I was looking for a joke and never found it. Yep. Don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> I was gonna say, and y'all can tell me if I'm wrong. Doesn't it have to be draining out at the same rate that the waterfall is pulling water in or else like we it would be going up? Like in order for that that pool to be stagnant, not stagnant as it not moving, but I mean in terms of the level, doesn't enough have to be draining out at the same rate stuff's being put in? Yes. Yeah, okay. so uh, if yeah, it's I just if have it's questions not as to where that is. <laughs> if it's not going out at the same rate it's coming it's coming in, then it the would be going either up. going up or going down. Right. And so my theory is that you have kind of a barricade, kind of like a pool, where it's mm -hmm. flowing over, kind of like um, what are the vanishing edge water, uh, vanishing edge mm -hmm. pools, where it's flowing yes. over the edge. And so mm -hmm. as the water goes up, it just flows over the edge. So you always have a pool there, but right. the outlet is um, flowing over. Got it. Sure. This is this is the the interesting stuff, guys. This is this is the money maker. This 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 is what uh, um. It's my geek uh, geek buttons. It is fascinating. I just wish I could contribute more. See, I just make dad jokes about it, and which is just dangerous. Yes, uh, clearly. <laughs> you break my brain with them, both of y'all. I'm surrounded. It's I, great. I don't. I don't know any dad jokes. No, Jim, you don't. Never heard of one in your life. You nope. just you stay away from them by by a rule as a rule. It's it's a, it's an um, it's a it's a a motto or a um a yeah. life uh, a life mm -hmm. um something, all words. It's a way of life. A way of life. It's a way we'll of go life. With that. The lifestyle, if you will. A lifestyle. There, we'll go with that one. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go with Took ethos, but I don't know if that's the right word. Ooh, that's a good one. It is an ethos, I suppose. <laughs> Google ethos. <laughs> it's a brand of water. <laughs> it is that. <laughs> e e definition, you stupid thing. Thank you. A characteristic spirit of a culture, era, or community as manifested in its beliefs and aspirations. Yeah. It's pretty accurate. 
yeah, that's a. I can usually pull words up that I don't know the definition for, but will fit what I'm looking for, and I'll just kind of go with it. Like, yeah, I meant that. It's a rhetorical or written technique that appeals to an audience or reader's ethics. Oh, this is this is literally about Greek writing. Sorry. <laughs> you got to pay to, extra like, for that too. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you used it pretty correctly. All right. Do you have anything else to add for these episodes, James? I'm just curious uh, what, like, I like I felt like, oh, there, this is going to be a two-parter with whatever's coming next. And then I realized, you know what? They could just appear somewhere else the next episode looking for their ship and have no explanation of all how they got off the planet. You just assume that they got the transmitter working and, you know, Sid or somebody else picked them up. Um yeah. Yeah. So, so it could go either way. That whatever uh, that the next episode is, you know, it could f- directly follow up, um, which would be interesting because maybe then they could pair Omega with somebody else and still talk about Echo, or they yeah. could. Uh, so you have not seen the next episode yet, because as we were are recording, it is Wednesday, oh, yeah, so it up. has come out, but I have not watched it yet. It is no, I, 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 I don't wait till. Uh, I wait till the evening so I can watch it with my wife. I haven't watched it either. So I guess, uh, yes, I, I, I thought that as well, that it felt like um, at least more of a uh, continuing storyline than a lot of the ones that we've gotten where they've all been like, not all of them, but a lot of them have been one-off episodes where you can start the next episode. It could be weeks later and it doesn't really matter. This one, if you start off weeks later, it's probably going to matter because we're going to have like three dead bodies um, <laughs> from the lack yeah, of food on the planet. Yeah. But I there's really those, hope they, those uh, little gazelle things. That's what I was wondering. I actually thought about that too. And I'm like, you got yeah, you those could things. Those. That's true. If you could find them. I mean, they did practically run you over and kill your dad. Yeah. For real, though. But, you know, you got two others. Kill your dad. (laughs) I don't know. I I never see Wrecker really as a dad figure to her. I always see Wrecker more as, like, the crazy big brother. Um, Yeah. And and, and it's kind of like the Zeb-Ezra relationship that's brotherly. And it's just like, hey, I want to teach you to blow (laughs) it up because, you know, mom and dad aren't going to teach you that. So I liked when um, he went over the waterfall and you just hear, ah! <laughs> when they're waiting for them to come down. <laughs> yeah. There's some good comedy moments in, in these. And specifically that one. Um, yeah. All right. Do you have anything else, Nicole? No. Nah. All right. Let's call it a wrap. James, where can Yo. people find you? Um, if they wanted to. Or if you wanted oh, them to. That's horrible. Uh, well, <laughs> I am a co-host of a, another podcast called Star Wars Ologies, where we geek out about uh, science and other academic fields of study and how they cross over with Star Wars. Uh, I think that was mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, that's the easiest way to find me. But if you want to, like, otherwise, uh, I, I'm on Twitter at James Jawa, but I'm not really on Twitter much anymore. Um, but if you want to send me a message, that's where you can do it easily. All right. You can find oh. us. No. Go on then. Okay. Rewind. I, I, rewind. I'm also going to be. Don't you got something at Star Wars Celebration? That's what I was getting to. Thanks for, for stealing the thunder there. Um, I am uh, moderating two panels at Star Wars Celebration Europe in London coming up in April. Uh, one is the Science of Return of the Jedi. Uh, we'll be talking about various aspects of Return of the Jedi. Ewoks, Death Stars, uh, Sarlax, um, Super Lasers, all kinds of stuff uh, about that. And then the other one is called and or the empire and a history of resistance it'll be uh looking at um the idea of rebellion and resistance both in the you know early imperial era and throughout star wars and then comparing it to real life uh resistance movements and we probably have the most phds per panel with those two panels come see us at star wars celebration europe in london uh we don't have the dates and times yet set for those panels. 
Are they, this is a genuine question. Not trying to take the piss, as they say. Are they calling it Europe, even though England's not Europe? Yes, all of the, the ones that have been in Europe or England have been called Star Wars Celebration Europe. That the, oh, that's just wrong. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> I'm sure the, that, that's the, interesting. The, yeah, but all the American ones are named after the city. Um, yeah. Or at least they did when they stopped numbering them. But right. the, the the European ones this have been Essex. just called Europe. Isn't it like? Oh, it's an or is it Or is it at the Essex Center? It's like it's at, it's at the Essex. Excel Center. It's at okay. the Excel uh. Center. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't say London anywhere on their logo. It says the Excel That's Center, wild. which I think when they put up that logo at uh, the end of Celebration, um, the logo is stylized capital E, capital C, uh, which mm -hmm. they forgot to do. And so, like, the British people were grumbly because it's like, it didn't even say London on it. And, yeah. Which, you that, know. Didn't actually, if you open before. up the Star Wars Celebration page, it says Star Wars Celebration Europe 2023. Yeah. That is insane. Yeah. I don't Europe know if they place. actually ran that by anyone over there, because <laughs> um, it's literally not even in continent. It's not. It's an island, and it's not part of Europe anymore. But fascinating. To, I work with people in England. If you can't tell, <laughs> um, and they're apparently pissy about this. <laughs> well, th it's not that they're just very specific. If you mention Europe, they they will say we're not a part of Europe anymore. Unfortunately, well, some of them. Um, well, yes, it depends. I mean, on technically which now with the the on, the, the, but... the channel tunnel, they're now part of Europe. I mean, yes, I've been in there. It's pretty fun. Um, on a train, it was dope. Um, but yeah, it's they're connected to it. They certainly are. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a a very interesting like semantics thing that I'm sure they they have feelings about. Well, they um, have all sorts of semantics. Um, they they have you know, feelings about Britain semantics, and England, so yes. and you know it's like yeah. they're British and English, but uh, you know Correct. then the Welsh and the Scots get mad at them, yep. and the Northern Irelanders are like, "We're not yep. even British." No, yeah, because they're part of the UK, but not mm -hmm. Great Britain. Yeah, Great Britain is the island, which mm -hmm. is Scotland, um, Wales, and England. Yeah, I had to learn this very quick. <laughs> like I had to learn it all very quickly. Um, yeah, they're just they're big into semantics, and I get it. Like, I get it. The, the, we get that way in Jersey with you know talking about like Central Jersey existing and whatnot. But um, yeah, the, the, I just found that very interesting that it's in London. It's in England. <laughs> it's not in Europe, but they're gonna call it Europe anyway. Wild. I wasn't doubting you, by the way. I was just wondering whether they were actually officially calling it that or not, because that's interesting to me. So regardless, those panels sound amazing. I wish oh, I they could, do. Absolutely. I wish I could be there. You can find us talking tauntauns at AIPGcomics.com. Or you can email us there. You can find us on Twitter at talking tauntauns. You can join our Patreon through AIPT Comics. And join us on Discord. And you can leave us a five-star review. We actually got a review. Um, I'll read that next time. From, oh, yeah. uh, from Rural Farm Boy. It was great. Oh, hey, thank bud. You, thank you thank so you. much. So that's all I got. We'll see you next week with the other half of the Star Wars Ologies team. <laughs> <laughs>